Okay, so I thought I'd do an updated version of my previous video about cold weather recommendations. And that's because it's that time of year now where the temperature starts to drop. People notice their batteries are not charging, charging slower, charging at random times, all the way through to my batteries not charging or discharging. Um, why? So previously I tried to answer those questions with a recording explaining about how batteries are affected by temperature. And this isn't a specific topic, this isn't a topic specific to Fox. All lithium ion phosphate batteries have an operating temperature range. And if you fall outside of that range, either it be too cold or too warm, you'll start to notice uh, performance limits being reached. So let's have a look. What do I mean by this? So the first thing to do is to understand, well, what is my battery temperature right now? And you can get a snapshot of battery temperature in the Fox version 2 app. That's under the device and then battery. You'll see in the bottom left-hand corner um, of the screen, I've got the temperature being shown. It's currently showing 11.2 Celsius for the battery in this example. You could also install more of a digital uh, standalone temperature sensor, put that you know, in on top of the battery, stick it to the, the back of the battery just to get an idea of what the typical ambient temperatures are. You could use Home Assistant and integrate with some of that rich data that Home Assistant's able to offer and give you a much more granular view, also a, a historical view. So you can see how the battery temperature changes when it's under load or changes throughout the day. You are getting a piece of information around the battery temperature so there are um, potentially dozens of battery cells inside of your battery depending on which battery you have um, the newer versions even have battery heaters built into them but we'll, we'll get to that in a little bit but if you've got dozens of cells inside of a metal box well, what is battery temperature and the figure that you're seeing in the Fox app is typically the lowest cell temperature and you'll have a, a slight variance of cell temperature throughout the battery pack by sometimes a degree or two just depends on how you're using the battery but the important thing to know is what's the what's the coldest cell in your battery pack because that is going to be used by the battery management system the BMS in determining what charge and discharge currents you can use or what speed can you push and pull energy in and out of the battery. So this first step, we understand the battery temperature, we understand how to view the battery temperature. What does that mean? Well, batteries, especially the newer models such as the uh, Cubes and the EP ranges, they're IP rated, so they can be installed outdoors, in outbuildings, in garages, as well as the recommendation now that it, at this time of recording is still a recommendation around putting batteries outside or in outbuildings versus what solar companies have done for years, which is to put the batteries with the inverter in the loft. So we're putting them in colder spaces, the batteries are getting colder, and what that means is the impact on that lower temperature, or some cases higher temperature in the summers, is impacting the performance. Um, so there's some general advice about well, when you're designing your system, where can you put it, what's the most suitable, what's the safest place to put the battery. Um, if it's in a, a garage, is there room to also, uh, is there room for insulation for to keep that temperature slightly higher, etc. But there is, there is an element of design that has to go into understanding where you're going to install your batteries. And what model battery you have and especially if you're considering an installation now with all new product you probably want to look for an EP battery or a cube an ECS battery that uh, has the heating or warming capability so as of uh, the fourth quarter of 2024 as we go into Q1 of 2025 most of the new battery ranges so the ECS cubes and the EP ranges now have an option, uh, which I believe is the same price. Uh, it's, just, it's now being optioned with a uh, an electrical heater or heating uh, pad inside the battery, and you can control how the heater works from within the app. So if you're going for 
an outdoor or an outbuilding installation such as a garage in 2025 or later make sure that you speak to your installer about making sure your version is equipped and is the H model for heater because that will remove a lot of the problems associated with the battery getting too cold because you, you've got the ability to set a, um, a heating timer on it. So let me move my camera a little bit and make this full screen. So this is a, an Excel of the battery algorithms uh, that I've had from Fox over the years. The top one is what I'm calling the old algorithm. So this is what the HV2600s have been using up until the latest firmware. And the new algorithm seems to be what all batteries are shipping with now. Plus, if you upgrade the firmware on your battery, be it a HV2600, a, a Myra 25, a cube or, or an EP battery, um, the newest firmwares seem to have been shifting to this new algorithm that's in the lower half of this page. So feel free to pause on this uh, on this page and zoom in and see see what you make of it. But the simple version is is the state of charge down the left hand axis and across the top is the cell temperature or the coldest cell in the battery pack. And you can see that around the middle, around the sort of 20s sort of area, uh, at 20 Celsius area, with um, with a sort of moderate uh, state of charge, you can you can get you know up to 50 amps of charge and discharge current in and out of these batteries. So the sweet spot for these is this darkest green area. Um, and the reason I've got them both on here is because we will have a mixture of users who have got the older hardware or older firmware and have had it updated and now notice their batteries behave differently or you've just purchased a new battery and some of the advice that you, you see or hear on the, on the group doesn't necessarily match what you're seeing. So the important thing is if the battery is under zero Celsius, there is the potential for it to not be able to charge at all and have zero amps current. Even though they can discharge uh, into the negative areas, some of the models can discharge down to minus 10, there isn't necessarily an exact science because it is a blend of the cell temperatures across the battery plus the state of charge it means that you might find that someone is still able to discharge at two or three degrees battery whereas you've got a four degree battery and you're not able to discharge or charge so this is the algorithm that the BMS has got set there there are some edge cases around that but as a general rule from what I've seen of people posting questions about various different battery behaviours, it tends to fall in this new algorithm type area. Um, obviously during the spring, summer, autumn, you don't notice any issues. So this is DC amps. So for most of the UK's climate, you're somewhere between 15 and 25 amps, which means that you're able to achieve typically top performance of your battery pack with most battery and inverter combinations. But the moment that you start to dip under 10 Celsius uh, as a battery temperature, well then you start to potentially half the current limiting and all the derating that's happening. And then you'll start to notice your batteries are charging slower. They may not be able to discharge at the same uh, amperage, which will mean that you'll start to draw a bit of grid power if you've got heavy loads running. And as you get to that sort of five Celsius and below, you can start to notice uh, strange things like the battery will start to sporadically charge during the day, even though there's no charging window set. And that's the battery trying to preserve a couple of things. One, it's trying to preserve uh, a bit of warmth in the cells, but it's also trying to uh, protect and preserve the state of charge. So if you are down to single deg single degrees, so nine and below, and you've got a battery that is under 50% state of charge, you're going to be observing different behavior, um, start, different behavior of the battery where it's going to start to spontaneously charge. You're going to see issues with it discharging. 
you're going to notice charging will significantly slow down. And as you go to those lower single digits, so sort of, you know, five and below, four and below Celsius, you're, um, you're going to see the current uh, really drop down to anywhere between two to five amps, depending on your firmware configuration. So, well, two amps of charging with a small battery pack is going to take a very long time, and you will really notice that. And with the lower amps, means that the battery isn't getting the energy, uh, the the power through it. So you're going to notice that well, the little warming effect that happens when you charge on cooler days. Now that it is being current restricted, you're not getting the same warming effect, and it's kind of a vicious spiral over a few days of cold nights where that battery starts to get really cold. So like I said, you can pause on this page and look at well, what temperature your battery is reporting, look at what state of charge it is, and get a, a rough idea. Now I've seen some examples where uh, I'm seeing I'm seeing different charging restrictions than, than what's on here. For, for example, earlier today, um, I was being limited to 5 amps, even though my, my batteries were around 10 degrees, 11 degrees. So it, it really does depend on what the BMS believes to be the, the safest thing for the batteries. And remember, all of this is happening. It's not to, to cost you money or spoil anyone's fun. It's The BMS is their sole job is to make sure that charging and discharging and managing that battery is done in a way that not only protects the, the life cycle of the battery so that it can live for many years, if not decades of use, but that it also is safe to operate and it doesn't run out of, out into extreme edges. So if your battery is very, very cold and your BMS was very basic and was, was just charging it at full speed, you would cause um, much worse degradation and damage to the battery than if you were to charge it more gently when it was uh, in that coldest moment. So I'm going on a little bit, but there are anywhere between five to ten posts a day with people asking questions about about the battery temperature and how it affects the battery behavior. So I thought I'd you know, just spend a moment in providing an opinion on well, what I'm seeing, also what the documentation as an installer we're provided by Fox in terms of how the algorithms work, explaining some of the edge cases and knowing that your environment, your battery, your voltage, your state of charge, they're all going to be a little bit unique to you and that you may not be able to draw a one-to-one -one relationship with what you're seeing here, but you should be somewhere in the area um, of what, you, what you're seeing here, what the behaviors that you're seeing. So this is what's going on. The colder the battery gets, the slower it can charge and discharge until uh, an unavoidable situation where it's in the low single digits where it will probably be refusing to charge and then you'll be seeing you'll be seeing all sorts of errors i think uh, treble 2 is the most common one which is to do with the battery charge requested but no response or no reply which means the battery is just telling the inverter that i can't do anything i'm i'm not going to be able to charge or discharge so the solution to all of all of this situation is ultimately to get your battery uh into that sort of 10 plus Celsius area where performance starts to become normal again and how to do that well a bunch of people online have shared with you their examples of their insulation boxing that they've done uh, these are old images from from some of the forum members there's been some even more construction I've seen people make uh, make cabinets out of wood with um, with various insulation board. I've seen greenhouse heaters in there. Uh, there's someone on the group that has um, has some kind of stock of proper enclosures. So there are heat, heated and ventilated enclosures, a proper outdoor rated IP uh, rated enclosure. So have a look at um, some of those posts. I think, I think the chap's name is Darren. He's got some kind of business where he sells proper uh, enclosures so if you're in an older battery that doesn't have a heater and you're you know worried about constructing your own solution then having a proper approved and tested product may be the way to go obviously at a cost for a a weekend project of buying a, a panel of insulation board and cutting it and duct taping together uh, a box that you can slide over your batteries on the coldest days or weeks 
seems seems quite sensible. Um, the owner's manual and the installer's manual will state about the minimum clearances to make sure that you've you're given it enough ventilation so you don't overheat the battery. Because as we saw on the previous page, if they're too warm, you have the same problem. You have derating happening up to a point where you damage the battery uh, above 55 to 60 Celsius. If it gets really warm, you introduce additional risks. So ventilation is important. All of the examples you see on the screen are, are allowing some space around the batteries. Um, you could add some heating or some warming. Some people have suggested uh, reptile heating mats. Apparently they're very cheap, very low wattage, and they'll just provide that little bit of background warmth just to keep batteries in outdoor installations in that better operating range. Obviously applying some caution that you don't buy a, a big heating element or a, a fan heater and overheat the battery. So something that is very low wattage, very controllable, that will just provide a little bit of background warmth with some proper insulation board boxed, you'll find that your battery temperatures start to rise and stabilize, hopefully in double digits, which means you'll see that better normal performance. That's really all I had today. I wanted to share the updated algorithm, which is applicable to those with new hardware or older batteries with newest firmwares, this, these Fox seem to be moving towards that new algorithm, which is a little bit more aggressive on derating uh, the battery and at slightly warmer temperatures to the older algorithm. But when you look at the pattern, uh, in fact, you can go back and just revisit again. When you look at the pattern, they've sort of reduced the maximum charging amperage in the middle. And they've brought it back down to a much narrow, well, it's not really fair to, um, because the X and Y axis are slightly different on some of the new documentation. So what you're looking at here, 20 to 44 Celsius, is actually looking at this whole block here. So it is actually similar to the older algorithm, except you can see that it derates earlier. So as you get to above 80%, 90 to 100, you can see that it's derating the amps from much sooner, even down to five amps on a battery that's under 10 degrees that's above uh above 90 percent sorry less than 90. <laughs> it's a bit funny i've had to reverse engineer some of the some of the charts that i was given uh but should give you a rough idea of what's going on here anyway any any questions if you have a battery that's operating far out of the operating range here um or you think that something's wrong always reach out to your installer who can Get in touch with Fox and they can check the data, but it's a cold time of year. The batteries are going to not perform as well, especially if they're outdoor, loft or garage installed and they don't have heaters. So you can have a look at the advice on the forum and see if there's, there's a, a cheap solution that can improve performance or just leave it and understand that a few times a year the batteries aren't going to be working as well or working at all in the coldest evenings. But something to consider and make a choice yourself. Anyway, thanks for watching. Have a great evening.